How do you play the artificial intelligence theme in Australia? Hello, I'm Kyle Rodder, and in this week's Investor Spotlight, we look at what is AI, how large the potential addressable market is, the structure of the market, and how to invest in AI-related companies. And of course, to walk through it, Danny Akuye from Ausbiz is joining me at the desk. Uh, Danny, great to see you, of course, for uh, another Investor Spotlight. Let's talk about the different aspects of AI because, of course, it's new and a fairly complicated world. It is. And uh, this was a really interesting exercise, just even personally, to try and break down all different aspects of what AI is because we, the consumer, see the end result, but there's a lot of, of a lot that goes on before that. So I really wanted to, as I say in the article, peel back the onion so that investors could actually understand the components. So really, really simply, if you have your generative AI, chat GPT that we're starting to use in office applications, that all starts uh, back with the very humble chip or the, the GPU graphics processing unit, which is what Nvidia does. And they sell for about US $36,000 each and you need hundreds, if not thousands of these things to work what is this generative AI, which is basically taking novel data, data, processing it, and producing an outcome, which is what uh, Microsoft uh, terms as co-pilot. So it's helping us pilot to achieve the outcomes that we want in terms of language provision, image provision. But <clears throat> if you then go back again and you say, well, where do all those GPUs sit? Well, they have to sit in hardware and they just sit in supercomputers, which are then in data centers and hyperscalers. And if we go back one little leg further, who actually makes these GPUs? Of course, Nvidia designs them, but uh, Taiwan Semiconductor actually makes them. And then the company that makes the machinery that allows to produce the chips is ASML. So we have this massive supply chain. ASML is in Holland. Their machines cost US $200 million each. Okay. Mm. And they are currently, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor is building massive new foundries, which is what makes the chips, the GPUs in the likes of Germany and America, and they cost billions of dollars. So as you can see, there's a really, really long supply chain here, which is quite complex to understand, but it gives you the points in terms of how you actually play the AI thematic. Interesting. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, not just now, I guess, the structure of the industry and the market, but the applications too, because there's a lot of blue sky thinking out there at the moment as to what is possible with AI. I mean, what are some of the things that uh, AI could do in the future? Okay, so at the moment, it's um, the likes of Avatar that Disney produces, that is visual AI. L'Oreal has it. So for example, if you if women want to try on makeup or men or whoever want to try on makeup, but they don't want to do it in the store, you can actually do it um, through AI, as in you have an avatar and you that looks like you and you pop your makeup on. Or there's another company called Symbiotic, which is listed on the NASDAQ, which automates Walmart's warehouses. And then of course you have Microsoft, uh, and the likes of Google that are embedding the thinking person's AI in terms of replicating languages and images. The next step is obviously when we, that they're trying to work towards is where it becomes intuitive. It starts to think on its own and you get the likes of Tesla's self-driving vehicles, but we're not quite there yet. No, perhaps not. But let's talk about some of the opportunities on the ASX. Because Indeed. there are a few names that are sensitive to this thematic. Why don't you take us through three AI stocks to watch? So basically here in Australia, um, our main uh, way of playing it is through the hardware, through cloud computing, through networking, through connecting businesses when they want to take um, their data off center, off premise into a data center, into the cloud, because the data center is basically the cloud. So we have three here. Our next DC is the largest one. They operate multiple data centers across Australia, also in New Zealand, they're expanding 
into Malaysia. And um, we have an average broker consensus price target there of around $13.77. Although some brokers like Macquarie have a standout target of $15.80 and Goldman's at $14.96. So generally buy to outperform ratings on that stock. Macquarie Technology, <clears throat> that is another one. It's a smaller one, about uh, 1.5 billion market cap compared to the likes of Next DC at six and a half billion. They also do uh, data centers. They're no relation to Macquarie Group, um, but they've recently raised about $160 million at $58.50 a share to expand their data centers. And Goldman Sachs is really bullish on that. They've got a 77 spot to 0 dollar price target on that one. So they're creating what they term generational vertically integrated cloud franchises and infrastructure. And then the other one um, is Megaport, which is the smallest of the three. And that basically upgraded and said they will become cash flow positive over the fourth quarter of this financial year and cash flow positive next year. Again, they are smaller, they're doing networking, connecting uh, companies to the cloud. Um, also liked, the whole sector is very much liked, but it's worth just highlighting for investors that in America there's a really big company called Equinix, which also does data centers and connects the hyperscalers, which are the likes of AWS um, and Azure for Microsoft, and they're just bigger, even bigger data centers. Um, but um, it's worth noting that these companies will eventually become utilities and pay dividends. So at the moment, they've got massive infrastructure spending to create these huge facilities, which um, basically house lots of computers um, and they gobble up lots of electricity. So they have to be any, very energy efficient. But ultimately, they will pay dividends and it becomes like an annuity earnings stream. But we're still a long way down the track because the market is just growing so fast. Fast. And the thing about AI is, is that the more data you have to process, the more chips you need, the more computing power you need, and the more data centers you need. So if anything, we're just accelerating the back end of the hardware part of the supply chain. A big theme with some local opportunities. Danny, thank you so much for running us through that. Okay, well, that's it for this week's Investor Spotlight. Join in next week. We'll put another investment theme under the spotlight.